Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Michelle and my goal is to empower and inspire people to create a life that they love. Today, I'm going to show you how to make some sound absorbing panels for hundreds of dollars less than buying them online. So let's get started. To create my panels, the frame is made from just some basic 1x4 pine. Now you can get this at the hardware store and the dimensions actually measure 3.5 by 3 quarters. This works great because it gives you enough thickness to use some commercially available insulation in the bat size that it comes in. So it's really great to just use a 1x4 and you're going to cut your pieces of your frame. So I went ahead and I just pre-cut all of the pieces as you can see here behind me. I'm gonna use my brad nailer to attach the frames at the ends. I'm gonna go ahead and repeat this process for all four sides of my frame. After you have your frame built, you're going to take some fabric to hold the insulation in and we're going to staple it on the back side of the frame. You can use anything you have laying around, it doesn't have to be fancy. I'm going to use this extra landscaping fabric that I happen to have in my garage left over from a project last summer. When attaching any fabric, you want to put a staple in and then work directly across, pulling the fabric taut as you go. And then slowly work your way out from the center to the corners to keep everything nice and tight. Once we have the landscaping fabric attached to the back of the frame, we're going to go ahead and trim it around the edges. Once we've got the backing on our box, it's time to fill it with insulation. The insulation batting that I chose to use is rock wool. This insulation is made to fit inside two by four construction. So when I made my frame, I actually took into consideration the dimensions of the rock wool bat, and that is the dimension that I used for the interior of the box. The overall length, on the other hand, the bats are longer, but the fabric that I have that will be covering the exterior of this is actually only 42 inches wide. So I had to take into consideration how much I needed to wrap around the edges and staple on the back. So my panels only measure 32 inches overall. This stuff cuts really well with a bread knife or you can use an insulation saw which looks just like a bread knife. Now that I've got my bat cut to size, I'm just gonna go ahead and tuck it down into my frame and you can see how nicely that fits. The one by fours just happen to be the exact depth so the insulation fits in there flush. Look how nice that is. Essentially we just made an insulated box. Now we get to cover it with the pretty fabric. When choosing a fabric for your sound panels, you wanna take into consideration two things, the texture and the weave of the fabric itself. You want to pick something that isn't too tightly woven because you want sound to penetrate through the fabric and into the insulation. Our goal is to not create something that it'll just bounce off of, but instead we want the sound to absorb. The fabric that I chose looks a lot like a linen. You can use a burlap, anything that has kind of a light, semi-sheer transparency to it. And again, when I made the length of my panel, I took into consideration how wide the yardage was so I could calculate and get the most panels out of the yardage of fabric that I had. Once you have your fabric cut to size, you're gonna go ahead and lay it nicely on a flat surface. I pre-ironed mine just to get it as smooth as possible and make the job of wrapping it around the panel just a bit easier. Place our panel face down onto our fabric, making sure that it's centered. And we're gonna attach this very much in the same way we did the landscaping fabric on the back. Starting on one side in the middle and then going directly across the frame, pulling it taut, folding it up, and stapling it. Mm -hmm. 
from there, we're gonna work from the center out to the corner and I'll show you how we address the corners to make a nice little box fold. And then once we get to this point, we're going to take the long edge, pull it taut, fold it under, and bring this edge up to create a nice little box corner. And then we're going to repeat the same process on the other side. After we get to this point, we need a mechanism for hanging our frame on the wall. Now there are many different ways to do this, but I just picked up a basic picture frame kit that had some of these crossbars that can be nailed into the back. So I'm gonna measure the halfway point on my frame and just go ahead and attach that crossbar. Now we're ready to hang our panel. If this tutorial helped you, please go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe to my channel for more do-it-yourself content. Until next time, stay creative.